Okay, welcome back. And we're discussing the setting up uh, at the uh, presidential uh, retreat uh, that started off, kicked off yesterday. Um, the new kind of arrangement, there's now a result uh, delivery unit. And in the president's uh, words, uh, I've taken a young lady, very dynamic, Hadiza Bala Usman, to head that delivery unit. And you have, if you have any complaints about her, uh, see me. The president also said there that um, he was going to be granting, uh, you know, a, a substantial amount of um, autonomy to all these functionaries. If you don't understand anything, ask questions. Uh, but that says, that says to me that the president also expects that within the brief of the Renewed Hope agenda, the president expects, you know, his functionaries, his officials to be self-starters. Um, and uh, Ken, you, you had referred to that earlier, using the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory as an example of people who, on their own initiative, on their own steam, you know, have gotten some difference from the way things were once the president was persuaded that, um, you know what, that's not a bad idea at all. That's the important thing about having a square peg in a square hole. Uh, when I was a commissioner, I remember we didn't have the governor written down our necks, but we had the, a, a, check, a check from a, another commissioner who was sitting in the executive, executive council of the, of the state, monitoring us in the sofa deck. And that put, that put all of us on our toes, and we had, we had set deliverables, and it, ha, it helped us to achieve so much as we achieved us at that time. I remember I did as much as 90 projects. You understand? And maybe if we didn't have all those check, checks in place, some of us would not have performed as we performed us at that time. When you, put, when you are in the executive, you have a budget. You can't work outside your budget. You know, budget is an appropriation, it's a mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. But if you are also working, where in your budget presentation, that's also a set of deliverables. You must be able to en en encapsulate the programs, tailor to us what you have presented in the Federal Executive Council, to be able to be funded in the budget. And when you have uh, challenges, that is when you can run to the secretary to government or then to the president to say, look, I have challenges in funding. That is why I'm not performing. Because you don't expect a minister who does not have a funded budget, for example, to perform. Because contractors will not bid for a job that is not funded. And even when they bid for a job that is not funded, some of them will leave the site if they are not getting funds. And you know, this, pro this process of having to go six months or three months in applying for certain uh, uh, parameters of payment for purchases and supplies are some of the issues that have to be taken care of in the retreat. If you notice, a lot of the ministers the time pass have complained that this has enabled them not to perform because they are waiting for clearance. Even Umar here, as, as it was, talked about it. There should be either ways that we can use in checkmating this process of, of, of going through this very bureaucratic process of maybe going to the uh, Bureau of Public uh, 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 Purchase or uh, having to say because of checks and balances. We like checks and balances, but the ministers, for them to be able to say, look, I have this approved expressly so that I can immediately hit the ground running. These are certain parameters you must also look at because if those hurdles are there and you now find the minister wanting, you, you, you cannot blame the minister. For example, a road job that has that you need two hundred million to complete, and the budget has fifty million in your reach. Yeah, how, how minister completes that road job? Yeah, I, I I I get what you're saying. Let me let me bring in Aki, who has called in from Ogun State. Good morning, Aki. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Uncle Yori, I, I think I have said uh, more than I want to say a while ago, but my what I want to add to it is if we can get this. A woman at this uh, Bala Usman's uh, number published so that everybody who has any complaining <laughs> ministers of praise can easily <laughs> ask a complaint to her. We appreciate what our president is doing and we wish him well. Very well. Very well. Thank you very much for calling in, Aki. You see now, Ken, I was telling you, Nigerians are immediately owning this whole concept. They, aha! Very, very good. Please, can you give us that madam's number? We want to join. I have to call on the now because it's going to be made. She's a, she's I know. a prefect, so to speak. I know. And it's, it's also important. Why it's important is that I like the fact that she was chief of staff to the uh, president, to the former governor of Kaduna before she became the chairman of NPA. 
and now she's in this position. So she comes with a lot of experience. You can't take that away from those positions she has held. Yes. But like I, I reiterated here, let us not lose sight of the fact that either she needs consultants or she needs a lot of assistance in that in that office. Because when I looked at the list of people that could attend fake meetings, apart from her and probably the special advisor on uh, on information and um, and uh, strategy, uh, there was Lion no other or by on Anuga. So there was no other person to say. So that therefore means that she will be the one sitting down with all the ministers. She goes back to her office. I know she will have consultants quite all right. But we need other people that can assist her in driving this process because her, her own department has become very important because with that check and balance is now coming from her own department, it's going to make the ministers work. But at the same time, it's going to also overwhelm her office. It's uh, very important it, to it, also it, know. If they are not very strategic about it, and as you said, there's plenty of experience there. The president even said it himself that look, we have we have the we, we have we, we have the manpower here. We have the qualitative manpower. Um, that you know, the, the president said that inter alia. And here are Nigerians excited at the whole idea. Um, good morning, uh, Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Yori. Good morning, my brother, and my friend Ken. Good morning, Dominic. Yori. Here for yeah, Yuri, there's something George said we, we must uh, take a second look at, and we are closing it. George said for this policy to work, for Mr. President to achieve results, all sectors, all policies that civil servants must comply. But Yuri, I'm going to give you a, 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 a life testimony that makes me feel that there are some hoops about that this system. I don't know whether power is still under the power ministry. I have an old, old meter I've been using since 10 years ago. I recharge it on Monday so I can have light. When I come to the charges, it couldn't pick up the, the charges. It couldn't discharge. So I have to go to their office. They told me they have canceled my meter. I have to pay 150000 for now one. I said, okay, can I pay and have another meter? They said, no, even that pay now, I have to stay in there for three months before I get another meter. How do you cancel the old meter? And you didn't let me know. You have my email, you have my phone number, and we're talking about power here. You cancel my old meter, you don't have another new meter, and I have to be three months. And this meter, we have millions in Nigeria that use it. You just face it off without telling us. Now, where is my money, which I paid on Monday? They said that money is gone. Where is my money gone? For this system to work, Yuri, every house must be on deck. There's no way, Mr. President, we're choosing results. If the civil servants, if the agencies are not cooperating, no, it's not possible. There's no nation that works without the, me, you, and everybody. And this is what, why I voted for uh, the president. What he did in Lagos here, he put everybody on check. And some cooperate, some do not cooperate. In this dispensation, every body must cooperate for Nigeria to work well. We are in desperate. Right. Please, power holding Nigeria Limited. If they are still part of Nigeria, the minister should look out into that system again. How do you cancel meters? You have short of meters, and you don't have meters to replace them. You cancel millions from the one that's only working before. How does it work? And who, how would I say this, Mr. President, that makes not to have power, but the power company or the power ministry? So every man must be on deck for we to move forward. This is what we must, you know, put to everybody. Every man must be on deck. And if there's anybody that we will fight it. Good morning, Nigerians. Uh, well, well, thank you. Um, I had a difficulty in, under, in hearing what you were saying, but by and large, I think I got it. Thank you for calling in. That's not your problem. It was in studio here that the level was too low. Um, so, um, well, uh, Ken, um, as, you, as you will recall, um, these are matters that would squarely fall under someone's purview in the range of uh, officials that you know, are servicing the country. And um, you know, the president had said inter alia that, um, look, he gave the impression that at that place where he said that perfection belongs only to God. So I got the impression that it will, this whole project will be tweaked as we go along. What Reverend Dominic brought up there was something about this suddenly it's becoming so cumbersome to just switch meters, for instance. Okay, of course, that one goes straight away to somebody's uh, department. Why is it like that? Why, what, 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 what can be done that is not being done? Why are Nigerians, for example, 
Look at the whole rocket science they're trying to make out of this whole matter about we need to switch up how we use our meters in compliance with a new world order. Uh, but people go on the website and cannot actually access uh, the worksite yet. Yet we were being told that by the 1st of November, if you didn't uh, have the new system in place, you would not be able to recharge your meter and that kind of thing. Maybe people have to ask, why are the systems like this? Why are they asking us to do all of this? Why can't it all be done automatically? Maybe technology, this is when we we'll come to know, uh, Ken, that whether or not we are really tech savvy, uh, whether or not uh, government is uh, you know, falling down, uh, you know, as it were, uh, whether or not there are things that can be done. Because me, I don't see how they can do a lot of things that they say we should be doing if you say all of Nigerians uh, should now go and, you know, process a change in the way the meters are used, yet it's not intuitive. Uh, you know, we had this problem when the NIM, NIM thing came up. They were threatening us that if you don't have it, this will happen. And we had to keep on extending because it wasn't the fault of the people. So these are the areas where I imagine that tweaks will be made as we go along, but there's no gain saying the fact that it is a mammoth operation. Yeah, yes, the thing is uh, monitoring and, and supervision, which, is, which boils down to the fact that you have decentralized the discos, you decentralize power. Yes. You are in charge of the TCN. The TCN has to monitor the Jenkos. The Jenkos have to now transmit power to the discos. The discos will now transmit power to us. So if there is no monitoring, if there is no evaluation of what has been implemented, and take corrections from the lapses. You always see these things happen because you see most of, more often than not, when we talk of privatization, a lot of powers have been given to the discos. So the Ministry of Power is not doing its bit through the TCN. And so now that we have these new uh, people coming on, on board, and now it also boils down to the same monitoring and evaluation we are talking about, we should be able to get better results from the discos. Those same, that disconnect that has been between the discos, the Jenkos, and TCN should be able to be breached. And if you breach that disconnect, the discos will now say, okay, they're properly monitored. The discos uh, will, that, will now have no choice but to monitor their officials who are now put in charge of these uh, meters and other parameters that are used in generating electricity to the houses. It goes to, it's, it's no gain saying that people sit down in, their, in the comfort of their office these days like you're rightly saying, if we're technologically suave and they are able to monitor, they're able to fashion out uh, programs that would enable them to get feedbacks from the end users. But we have not been able to get to that stage. And so while we are still trying to get to that stage, we need to implement these things by way of using it at, at a pyramidal peak, coming from top to bottom. And in that way, you'll be able to effectively monitor what is happening. Well, you know, the president also said that the buck stops here, meaning on his desk. Um, uh, he, it, it indicated that he wasn't going to be passing the buck around. He said he inherited both the assets and liabilities uh, from his predecessor, uh, but we're all now in one ship. And um, uh, tellingly, he said, do not wreck the ship. In other words, everybody has to pull their weight, and it's not a time for excuses. People don't want to hear excuses. All we're interested in is um, uh, progress and development. So it looks like um, there, there's very little room for explanation or excuses. They're just going to be asking for performance. I hear that we have Titi Loye. Did I get that right? Titi Loye. Titi Loye is on the line. Good morning. Good morning. OK, go ahead, Mr. Titi Loye. Yes, I, I want to contribute to what is being uh, done at this uh, Dayon Kuyori. Sure, sir. Go ahead, please. Okay. My contribution is this. Uh, I want to thank uh, 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 Reverend Dominic for his contribution. That's very wonderful. I also want to lay my emphasis on that. As much as we have our President Tinubu that we know we so much, some of us believe in him so much, and uh, we can see what some of the ministers are already doing. Uh, but if we are to 
move faster and achieve results. Government must find a, a way of dealing with civil servants, dealing with those who are working with agencies and ministries. They are the major problem. For example, I'm a consultant. We got a taxpayer that was not on the taxnet before. We wanted him to be provided on, on task promise. As we speak, we have been on it for more than a month. And we are calling them. They had a little issue on task promise. Is it the taxpayer's fault or consultant's fault to rectify that issue? Somebody who wants to be paying tax to government, that the staff working at Everest are frustrating the taxpayer from being profiled. What could be the problem? It's not normal for them to contact their head of it if they're having problems with court, with chartered. We've done everything. As we speak, they are no longer... Uh, uh, even attending to call, responding to tax, thinking that they are doing taxpayer any favor for doing what they are employed to do. And most problem is most of them are just there chatting, getting the money paid. Meanwhile, they are not even delivering results. They can frustrate whatsoever effort that minister and government are putting in place. I think they need to be checked and mail. Effectively, X, the rate of recovery will be very slow compared to what uh, President Tinubu and Minister uh, put the effort they are putting in place to make things work. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in uh, on that, Mr. Titiloi. Exactly. Uh, now there's little, there's very, very little shade, little, very, very little area to uh, hide under when things are not working the way they should work. Uh, already, uh, you know, both of us were here, Ken, when people were calling and saying, aha, now I'm happy. I also want to be in it. Somebody challenged us, bring in those ministers the way you used to bring them in before. Uh, you know, some of them. Bring more of them in. Let them come and tell us. Let, us, let them hear, <laughs> hear from us. So some of those things that are routine, one, uh, the people would think, ordinary people would think, that are routine that um, perhaps governance would have been able to sort of uh, address and put in place. Uh, when they're not in place, now they're going to count against perhaps the um, smoothness of the operation, this whole renewed hope operation. And um, so ministers are not going to be very tolerant of those kind of situations. They themselves will want to know what is the bottleneck, why is the bottleneck happening. And I imagine with those kind of things, uh, they, they spoke about this whole power thing that you've explained, Ken. Other areas uh, that uh, the president's uh, also spoke about the security from terror, all forms of criminality, fairness and uh, rule of law, uh, anti-corruption, um, you know, uh, and all those kind of things. All of these are fair game that we have to be monitoring how well we are doing or not doing because the provision has been left there for what uh, for um, uh, not doing. But you said it very well at the at the beginning, Ken. That um, well, the, the the exercise is excellent but let's see it work in practice. And that, um, uh, let's see it work in practice. Uh, I think uh, the taste of the uh, pudding, how is it that you and both people used to say, is in the eating? It's actually in the eating. Because if you look at the security situation we have in this country, it should also set an agenda for the, uh, the, for the security architecture of the country, especially now that it has a new chief of staff or chief of defense staff, and you have a national security advisor. We have IPOP in the Southeast threatening the very existence of, although of course they're asking for self-determination, but you have the other arm which has been led by Simon Ekwa, which has been uh, threatening the very existence of the people as you guys sit at home, which has crippled the economy of the Southeast. We have Boko Haram still raging in the Northeast. And we have the uh, bandits kidnapping and the farmer and headers clashes. Yes, it's not as it was before now, but uh, the security architecture in this country still needs a lot of jigging. So I think parameters should also be set by Mr. President for the security uh, agencies, for them to also know that they're going to be evaluated. That way they'll be put on their toes. Remember that we, we complained so much. I remember on this studio, I complained so much when the chief of army staffs and a whole lot of them were left for about six years by Buhari without making any change. And we're complaining that, look, we need to rejig, we need to rejig. Until eventually, reluctantly, we rejig. 
So now, if we also set those parameters in the security arm, um, which is be very key, without security, there can be no progress. It will also allow them to know that, look, my job is on the line, and I have to make sure that there is no crime. I have to make sure that there is no kidnapping. I have to make sure that there is no killing. And I, make, I have to make sure that there is no ethnic uh, upheavals. So that also helps a lot in the security sector, just like what he has done in the tax sector. The tax reform committee has done excellently well. Most of the double taxation and most of us have complained in the time past have really told on the economy. They have been able to identify. But let us put the paper to, to work so that it will not be one that has just been submitted to the president as we have seen in the time past. So these are some of the areas that need to be uh, dealt with in this, in this retreat. Indeed. Well, um, by all indications, it's, it does seem as if um, this particular uh, initiative, uh, you know, one among uh, quite a few that have uh, been brought um, uh, about uh, since um, President Tinumbu took the oath of office, this particular initiative has been a hit, and um, everybody hopes that it will work. And um, the president is very, very confident that it will work um, the way it has been set up. But he also left room that, look, only God is perfect, meaning my interpretation is that whatever needs to be tweaked will be tweaked. You know, I just need to, uh, the people know me. If, there's a, they, if they think they've suspected a gap or a, a lapse or anything like that, let me know about it. And then we can review it. We can, we can fix these things. Among those things are some of the things that you have spoken about, Ken. Uh, so... Um, we're going to have to leave it here for now, but I want to thank you, um, Mr. Ken Okulubo, for coming on the program this morning. Really appreciate your time.